Hello family. Today we're taking a look at Hosea chapter 14. And uh, we're going to look at God's inability, if you would, to stop, to, to stop loving. He is a lover. And what we see in this portion of scripture is wonderful. Is we're coming to the end of the book of Hosea. And it's so fitting, this wonderful chapter at the end of the book. It's where sin abounds, the Bible says, grace does much more abound. And what we see is these great promises to the children of Israel, even though they've been walking in, in rebellion, and these wonderful promises to us as well. The God who is a relentless lover comes across and says, there is new hope for you. There is a way out of your destruction and out of your misery. There is a way to discover my grace and love. Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all our sins and receive us graciously, that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made, for in you the fatherless find compassion. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely, for my anger has turned away from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. Like a cedar of Lebanon, he will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree his fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. Men will dwell again in his shade. He will flourish like the grain. He will blossom like a vine, and his fame will be like the wine from Lebanon. O Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? I will answer him and care for him. I am like a green pine tree. Your fruitfulness comes from me. Who is wise? He will realize these things. Who is discerning? He will understand them. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. In verse 1, he says, O Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you. See that little phrase? Take words with you and return to the Lord and say to him. Now, what God actually does, he says, listen, you repent. And to repent, you're going to have to speak repentance. You speak, you, you proclaim. And then he's going to do is he's going to give them actually the words to say in repentance. Because it's not enough to just think it's not enough to just think of repentance. It's not enough to kind of go, okay, I feel like I'm a repentant person. That you actually have to repent. God requires words spoken. It's so interesting in scripture. If you do a study through where God says to speak. For instance, when Jesus said, speak to this mountain and, and, and command it to be cast into the sea and do not doubt. Jesus often would speak spoken words of healing and deliverance or spoken. Repentance has to be spoken as well. It's not just something that you think in your heart. It reminds us in Romans chapter 10 and verse 8, where God gives us how, in fact, to come to him for salvation. He says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. See, the mouth and the heart must unite together. He says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confession. Now he gives us what the confession needs to be. He tells us this, take away all iniquity. So he says, speak these words in confession. He's telling the children of Israel how to come back to him. Take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously. 
for we will offer sacrifices of our lips. It's kind of interesting because the word sacrifices here can also mean calves or ant, like like um, a full like when they brought animals to the Lord in sacrifice. This is a sacrifice of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. So hear the confession. They were trusting in Assyria. They were trusting in Egypt. They were trusting in other things. And so their confession is, Syria shall not save us. Maybe we need to confess, Lord, our bank account is not going to save us. Our job is not going to save us. Our doctors are not going to save us. Our family, they're not our salvation. Our salvation is only in you. So they're they're saying it. God has actually given them the words to say, as Syria shall not save us, we will not ride on horses. In other words, we're not going to be trusting on our horses. And nor will we say any more to the work of our hands, you are our gods. No more. I'm not going to trust in any of these things. For, you, for in you, the fatherless find mercy. God, you're the only one. You're our father. And we trust in you. God says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. I love as we come to the end of this book that proclaims judgment over and over again because of their ongoing rebellion. God says, I will heal their backsliding. Now, it is going to happen. Israel as a nation has been in rebellion against God. But God is going to heal them. The Bible says, there's, Zechariah says, that they will look upon him whom they have pierced and they will mourn. That in a day there will be, in fact, a great revival. And Israel will be revived. But we are God's people as well. Those of us who have trusted in the Lord. And it's so easy for us to look to other things other than God. And there's this reminder to us and this proclamation by God and say, speak words of repentance. I, the scripture tells us to confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. You know, when Jesus taught us to pray, he said uh, in the Lord's Prayer, he said, Lord, forgive us our sins. Forgive us our unrighteousness as we forgive others. Forgive us our sins. I believe that daily it is wise to come before God and to keep, well, to keep our failures, our repentant time short. In other words, don't let it go a long time before a, a moment of repentance. As soon as fact that we find that we have sinned before the Lord, that's the time to come to God and say, God, forgive me. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. That we ought to, on a regular basis, take evaluation of our life. I like to do it on a daily basis. I like to, at the end of the day, look back and say, Lord, have I done anything that dishonored you today? Have I had thoughts? Have I had actions that were not pleasing to you? I want to stay in a short lease with, with God. I want God to, uh, to know that my heart is always ready to respond to him. I want to speak those things. I want to say when I've sinned, not just, Lord, I've sinned. I want to say what I've done. Lord, I was rough with that person, or I was angry with that person, or Lord, I spoke words that were not kind, or Lord, I was judgmental with that individual, or Lord, you know, I was dishonest. I want to keep those things before God, and I want to speak them directly, because what I trust is that God is good, and he is faithful and just to forgive me so that I can walk in a clean way before him and in his blessings. How about you? Look at how this book ends with a question, who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. We understand and we have the wisdom from the Holy Spirit to help us to recognize that we have a God who loves us and cares for us and takes care of us. And we want to know that we are walking in his ways. 
It's not a God who wants to judge or discipline. It's a God who is constantly trying to woo us with his love. And his love is drawing us. Let's go to him. Father, I thank you for your unending, wooing love. Lord, we come to you, Lord, with open hearts. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.